The end of World War I was still two years away when the Ducks played in their first bowl game. Oregon and Pennsylvania met in the third Rose Bowl ever played, January 1st, 1917. In this game, Oregon All-American Shy Huntington threw for a touchdown and ran for one. The Webfoots, as they were called back then, beat the Quakers 14 to nothing. The Oregon victory marked a significant turning point. It meant that West Coast teams had finally achieved parity with the powerful teams from the East. The Ducks got the Roaring Twenties off to a good start. Three years after its first Rose Bowl appearance, Oregon was back in Pasadena. The opponent was Harvard. But before the game, some important business. How about a visit to the Fox Studios for a get-together with some Hollywood starlets? This is a duck uniform from the 1920 game, purple and gold back then. The Oregon 11 lost this game 7-6 on a controversial call. A 25-yard fourth quarter drop kick was ruled no good. Harvard thought it was good. Crimson players slammed their helmets in disgust. Even the scoreboard operator thought it was good. He had given Oregon credit for the score before the officials made their call. It would be the Ducks' last bowl game for 29 years. Good afternoon, everyone, everywhere. This is the old Scotsman, Gordon McClendon. And here at Dallas, Texas this afternoon in the Cotton Bowl, more than 70,000 people have come out to see the Oregon Webfeet, co-champions of the Pacific Coast Conference, tangle with the champion SMU Mustangs of the Southwest Conference in one of football's greatest shows, the Cotton Bowl. From the Webfoot 36th, Kyle Roach takes the ball, fakes to Walker, booms down the middle, shakes off two Oregon men beautifully. Roach going, going, gone Goslin, or should we say, gone duck. Fourth quarter now, Norm Van Brocklin heaves to the end zone, caught by Dick Wilkins for an Oregon touchdown as Webfoot supporters go crazy. SMU 21, Oregon 13 now, and that's the way it ends as the Ducks forgot to duck just once too often. Born through a party in the county jail. In 1958, the Ducks were back at the Rose Bowl and apparently in over their beaks against top-rated Ohio State. The Buckeyes, coached by Woody Hayes, were six touchdown favorites. Oregon lost the game 10-7, but definitely held its own against Ohio State. If it weren't for a dropped pass with 47 seconds to play, the Ducks might have pulled off one of the biggest upsets in Rose Bowl history. Oregon quarterback Jack Crabtree earned player of the game honors. This game was considered to be the best East-West clash to date. Hey, Nate, honey, is that you? Oh, Nate, Eight months after U-2 pilot Gary Powers was shot down over Russia, the Ducks played Penn State in the 1960 Liberty Bowl. The game was played on a chilly day in Philadelphia. Oregon scored the first touchdown, but the Nittany Lions dominated this game, winning 41 to 12. Well, shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. One month after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Oregon was in El Paso, Texas, for a Sun Bowl matchup with SMU. The Mustangs had beaten Oregon in the 1949 Cotton Bowl. On this December day, it was the Ducks coming out on top as quarterback Bob Berry led Oregon to three first-half touchdowns. Oregon All-American Mel Renfro sat this one out with an injury as the Ducks beat Coach Hayden Fry's Mustangs 21 to 14. After a 26-year dry spell, the Ducks were back in a bowl game. Last year, it was the Independence Bowl at Shreveport, Louisiana. Oregon fell behind to Tulsa 17-10 at the half, but quarterback Bill Musgrave led the Ducks to 17 points in the final 18 minutes, and the Ducks beat the Hurricane 27-24.